What's going on YouTube? In this video, I am going to talk about the bad side of aviation, the ugly side of being an aircraft mechanic. Stick around. Okay, so I'm going to talk about four things that you may experience in aviation if you work as an aircraft mechanic. And I'm gonna rate them sort of, in my opinion, from the, the most bad to the least bad. The first thing would be your uh, your work schedule, your overtime, and just how physically demanding aviation as an industry as a whole can be, but particularly as it pertains to aircraft mechanics. There are plenty of jobs, like I know, for example, if you worked at Standard Aero, it's a engine overhaul facility, there are plenty of jobs where you will work a straight 40, you have potential for overtime, but you'll work a straight 40 on like a 410 schedule. So you work Monday through Thursday, 10 hour shifts, and then you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Maybe you have the weekend shift, whatever, but you have lots of time off. However, if you work for one of your major airlines like United or Delta, where the money is at, if you work at like Standard Aero, for example, you're gonna be making between that, that 25 to $40 an hour range, depending on your years of experience and how long you've been there. If you're working for United or Delta, yeah, you could make six figures. You're gonna get paid 40 an hour, 45 an hour, depending on your experience, again. But the reason you're making six figures is because you're working 55, 60 hours a week. And it's, it's, it's major airlines, right? If you wanna go take a flight on Christmas, you can. You can go book a trip right now and fly on any day, which means the airplane has to have a maintenance crew with it. So. It's not uncommon to work nights, weekends, holidays, rain, shine, it doesn't matter. The airplane has to fly and they need somebody to fix it. And those sort of long hours can make it really difficult to have a successful marriage. We have a, a slang, we call it AIDS, aviation-induced divorce syndromes. It, hurt, it hurts flight attendants, it hurts pilots, it hurts mechanics, like it happens to a lot of people. So. <laughs> Just be prepared that if you go to work for the majors, that's something you can expect to look at is working a lot of hours. Yeah, you're gonna get paid a lot of money for that because like I said, you're if you're making 40, you're getting overtime, you're getting 15 hours, let's say you're working 55 hour weeks, you're getting 15 hours at 60 hours at $60 an hour every week, week in and week out. You can make a lot of money really quickly, but you're spending so much time at work, so much time away from your family, your wife, your kids, you know, whatever it may be. So that can kind of suck. The second thing I want to bring up is this is not an indoor job. Uh, there are, again, some jobs that are. If you're working back shop, if you're working an overhaul facility, you might find yourself in a career or in an industry where you are inside of an air conditioned hangar overhauling engines or overhauling accessories, components, whatever it may be. But for the most part, this job is out in the weather. If you work like where I work in Texas, that means come December when it's that two and a half, three weeks a year we get where it's below freezing, you're out on the ramp or in the hangar in below freezing weather, trying to stay warm with a heater. And when it's summertime, when it's 110, 115 degrees in August and July, you're out on the ramp or in the hangar in 110 and 115 degrees trying to stay cool. And it's just, it sucks, man. It's just like working construction or anything else, especially when you take into account the, uh, the safety aspect, which is going to be another point here. You know, the airplanes are white and that will burn your eyes after enough time looking at it. The ramp is white and that will burn your eyes after enough time looking at it. When I say the ramp is white, I mean it, it's concrete, right? but there's a lot of sunlight being reflected back at you. So your option is either wear like what I'm wearing now, a t-shirt, you know, or cover up so you don't get a sunburn. So you'll be out there in like a boiler suit, for example, or some sort of onesie with, with gloves on, sunglasses on, and a hat on trying to cover up so you don't get a sunburn and it's 110 degrees. And it can just be brutal. It can be absolutely brutal. Which leads me to my third thing, which is safety. This is a very, very, very dangerous industry. Um, aviation is very much stuck in the 40s, and I'll give you two examples of that. There are two chemicals we still use in aviation that a lot of the world has moved on from. One of them would be toluene, and another would be MEK. Both of these things are known to cause major health risks, 
and we still use them in aviation for lots of different things cleaning um neutralizing chemical agents like glue for example if you're gluing on de-ice boots you put on the 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 glue you put on a second coat you put on a third coat and then you have to coat it all with toluene which re-softens the glue and reactivates the glue agent that when you glue on the de-ice boot it reattaches but toluene is nasty nasty stuff um not to mention you know just small things you can look into all of the accidents and incidents that have happened over the years in aviation you know lockout tag out is a big deal people i'll give you an example you left a wrench up in a wheel well and somebody goes oh crap my wrench and they go up there to grab it real quick and the person in the cockpit didn't know any better and they throw the gear up and that person loses an arm or, or something like that you know it, it's very very dangerous you have to follow your safety procedures you have to pay attention to what you're doing you have to really be aware of your surroundings everything is very very loud jet engines are incredibly loud which means you're often wearing uh foam foamies in your ears and some sort of over the top air protection over that which means that you don't have the best hearing anymore and then there's things moving around so it's really easy to lose track of your situation and get hurt and when that's a constant reminder you have to be extra vigilant you constantly have to be looking around and checking and looking at your other crew members and it's, it's a it's a whole team on this airplane right and you're looking at your other crew members making sure that everybody has line of sight and we all know what we're doing making sure the tags are right constantly discussing with one another what's happening because the moment we take a shortcut on a safety procedure the moment somebody forgot to put a lockout tag out pin in or a remove before flight tag on it could be something simple not even you getting hurt somebody goes and goes to crank the engine and a remove before flight tag that was still on the nacelle goes a sucks itself into the inlet and now we're doing an engine change and that's very very expensive my fourth thing for you is going to be layoffs so layoffs are not as much of an issue now as they have been in the past but just like every other industry aviation booms and it grows and then the economy crashes people stop taking trips things happen whatever it may be and that demand falls off and you could very easily find yourself in a situation where you're working a job you're making good money you're a good crew member but we lost the contract or something happened and it's time to start laying people off they typically lay off the non amps first and then the amps go next you know, do you have some job security because you have an AMP? You can go somewhere else and you can get another job, of course, but it still sucks. Layoffs are never fun. If you have a job and you're counting on that income and then you lose that job, now you're trying to find another job. And it's not like you got fired. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just layoffs. They happen. Um, sometimes you think, oh, well, we got a contract for this engine. The contract's good for 15 years. We're on year eight. And you're thinking, oh, good, yeah, 15-year contract, year eight. Well, that, that means there's only seven years left on the contract. Did I do the math right? Yeah, it means there's only seven years left on the contract before it expires, which seven years doesn't sound like that long. But I've been an aircraft mechanic for seven years, or sorry, a licensed aircraft mechanic for seven years now. The time goes by so quick. And if that contract expires and they can't renew it or they don't have another contract to replace it, Everybody that was hired for that contract is going to have to get laid off because they can't remove it. My fifth reason, this is going to be a nice little bonus reason for you. And this isn't so much a bad thing. It's not so much a good thing, but it can hurt you. That is, aviation is a very, very small community. It's not uncommon when we go out to lunch. I work with a, a gentleman here at the school. It's not uncommon that when we go out to lunch, we'll be sitting at a, at a table and somebody will go, Hey, man, how have you been? And, you know, they used to work together, right? And if you're working at Boeing and you leave Boeing and you go get a job at Standard Aero, for example, your supervisor at Standard Aero may play golf with your supervisor at Boeing. Everybody knows everybody and you really don't want to burn any bridges in aviation. You don't want to come in with a, with a hard mindset of, I don't care, I'm not here to make friends because everyone knows everyone. And if you burn a bridge, it may very well come back to bite you later in your career. The good side to that though, is that if you are a strong worker, a solid worker, and you, you 
you go above and beyond, you follow your manuals, you know, you do everything you're supposed to do and you have a good reputation, again, it's a small community and people are going to know that. You'll get good recommendations, you'll build a good reputation. But if you go around with a bad attitude, burning bridges, and not being the nicest guy, you're not going to be an aircraft mechanic. All right, so those were your four reasons plus a bonus reason on why aviation can be a little tough. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you work in aviation and you feel like I forgot something or you want to add another something to the list that, you know, being an aircraft mechanic is hard, go ahead and throw it down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Subscribe. And as always, be easy.